Podcast Network. What is up, everybody? Thank you for checking out the Pat Out of Hell podcast. It's been a while. I'm back. I'm feeling better. And we are here. Thank you for supporting the podcast uh, and the Baba Cole Core Podcast Network. I do appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying the other podcast, the Glass Clown, Clown Podcast, where I talk to guests about mental health issues. Uh, that one I'm pretty stoked about. This one is just me. This one is just where I talk to myself about what's going on, and oh boy, has shit been going on. First off, I was so stoked to come back. I uh, had a great trip to New York. If you follow me on my socials, you know what's up. You saw what was going down. I uh, had a great time. And uh, it was a work trip for my wife. So I just went, you know, take advantage of the free hotel, you know. Uh, and we were just playing tourists the whole time. It was a lot of fun. Uh, this is my third time being in New York, but the first time that I actually had money to play with. Uh, so that was cool. Uh, actually, I uh, actually hit up some mics, uh, and I knew that I wanted to hit up uh, comedy open mics. I knew that I wanted to do that. Uh, talk to a lot of people about it. Talk to my therapist about it, and then I come back and I tell my therapist that, oh yeah, I did a mic every day. I almost I did two, uh, you know, uh, a couple of times, and he's like, wow, man, I really didn't think that you were gonna do it, and I was like, what the hell, dude, like. Where's the where's the support? Where's the you know, believe in me? He's like, no oh, man, I'm glad you did it. Um, this the whole therapy dynamic thing. It's so weird right now because like he's like one of my best friends right now, and it sucks to say. I even joke about it. You know how, you know, uh, I'm not gonna go into it. But uh, therapy just feels like I'm hanging out with a buddy uh it, it's good i you know he, he still navigates the conversation to to where i realize that it is therapy and i'm working on stuff but the friday before i left the friday before i left he called me and he's like i'll get back into what he said before but he but he called me the friday before i left and he's like uh hey man just calling to see if you're gonna make it to your appointment today and I start, I fucking jumped up out of my chair. I'm like freaking out. I was like, what? We had an appointment today? Oh, man, I'm so sorry. Oh, no. I'm, I'm working right now, blah, blah, blah. blah. And then he's, I just hear him laughing. And he's like, no, nah, man, I'm just playing. I just want to check in on you and tell you a good trip. How, I wish you a good trip, all that stuff. And deep inside, I was like so angry. I don't like those types of jokes. I don't like being lied to. And then I don't like feeling like I'm supposed to be somewhere where I'm like, or that I'm not somewhere I'm supposed to be. I Every day I go through stuff saying like, man, I know I should be doing something right now. I know I'm supposed to be doing something right now. I check my calendar. I, I try to remind myself, do I have anything? Is there anything going on? Am I supposed to be somewhere right now? I know I should be doing anything else right now. And so when he called and he's like, hey, just uh, are you coming in today or what's what's the deal? I fucking freaked out. I felt so bad. I felt so guilty because I was like, oh, no, man, like he's just there waiting and I didn't show up. I'm an asshole, I'm a piece of shit. And then he's like, no, I'm just kidding, man. I just we don't have an appointment today. And I, I, I was so mad, but I was just like, oh, that's a good joke. <laughs> oh, man, I'm not having a heart attack over here on this end and stuff. Um, but he was just making sure, you know, like, oh, because we usually we were supposed to meet the Saturday that I was leaving. Uh, that's usually my scheduled appointment time. But I was flying out that morning, Saturday morning I was flying out. So I wasn't going to make it. I wasn't going to be in town for my usual time to appointment, whatever. And uh, but he played that trick on me, and I, I did not like that. Did not like that at all. 
Um, but anyway, so when I came back and I told him about the trip, he was like, dude, I really didn't think you were going to do it. I'm super proud of you, which is nice to hear, you know, every now and then that you know, I'm proud of you and all that stuff. But he was like, I, I really didn't think you were, I was like, why? What, what is it about me that says like, I'm not going to do this stuff? And, uh, and it makes sense. I'm, I'm actually surprised that I did it too, but I like, I needed to go out and, and I needed to go and I needed to prove to myself that I could be out there and it, I was, it was just open mics i mean anybody could do open mics it's not a big deal for sure but to be out of my element to be out uh among strangers and, and stuff like i could make my friends laugh like the people like the mics here everybody kind of knows me knows about me has seen me before and all that stuff i could I, I consider them friends and i i consider you know that i i can make my friends laugh like at a show there's strangers and sometimes there's strangers at open mics like non-comics just people just there to check out the show and stuff so when i get them when i make them laugh i was like oh yeah that that counts not that it doesn't count when my, when i make my friends laugh but it's just easier to make my friends laugh than it is to make a room full of strangers laugh so hitting up the mics in new york and everybody's a stranger they're all comics pretty much uh pretty much they're all comics uh but to get their laughs to have them you know set up punch and then they ah, that was a rush that was a rush uh so get, did that went to a couple shows went to uh, the comedy cellar uh almost wasn't able to get in because they do reservations and i had just last minute it was a last minute sunday thing just finished having dinner with the wife and some some of her friends and we were walking to the hotel room and i was like oh there's 11 30 show at the cellar i really want to check it out we're like 15 minutes away on subway. Um, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna run. I'm gonna go to the comedy cellar. Made a quick reservation. It says your reservation is approved. We'll see you at the cellar Sunday, 11:30. Blah blah blah. And and they're they're checking vaccination cards. They want to see proof of vaccination. Which I'm like, I mean, I got it, you know. But I just thought that was so wild. I thought that was, that's crazy. I mean, the comedy cellar is like a small place, and apparently everybody there was vaccinated, so it was all free flowing. We're all without masks. We're all pretty close. We're all, you know, touching butts and all that stuff. Um, so, so I get to the door. I finally find the cellar because I get lost. I finally find the cellar, and I'm at the door, showing my ID, showing my my uh, my COVID card, my vaccine card, and the the guy at the door is like, I can't find your reservation. He's like, when did you make it? I was like, oh, I just made it about like an hour ago. He's like, dude, we've been sold out for weeks. Which I'm like, okay, if you're sold out, why does the computer let me make a reservation? Why did the website allow me to make a reservation? Why did they send me a conf conf uh, com confirmation email saying, see you at 1130 at the Comedy Cellar? But because I was by myself, you know, the wife decided to stay at the hotel because it was getting late and she had an early morning uh, the next day. And he's like, if it's just you, we'll let you in. But next time, make it, make a reservation a week's out in advance. I was like, okay, whatever, dude. Um, got in, small place. Comedy Cellar is a tiny place. And I like those types of rooms for comedy. I don't like the big rooms and all that stuff. It's more intimate. Uh, the laughs are just as louder. The the energy is just fucking there, you know? And uh, so, yeah, but it's a, it's a tiny place. It's a tiny place. Everybody's jam-packed like sardines, but it's okay because we got the vaccine and we're all good. And uh, I'm just saying everybody is there. You know, on, on stage that night, I saw Joe Mackey. I saw Shane Gillis. saw Rosebud Baker. Uh, Greer Barnes. Greer Barnes has this amazing fucking uh, bit that I, that gets me every time. I've seen it so many times, but it gets me every time. And he did that bit that night. Uh, who else did I see? Uh, a couple other people. And then David Tell closed out the night. Now, David Tell is one of my favorites. David Tell is for sure one of my favorites. Uh, and then, I mean, nobody. I didn't know who was going to be on the list. It's a surprise show. You know, they don't list who's going to be there. It's just a random type of thing. You don't know who's going up. You know, I saw Sean Patton there, but he didn't go on stage. He was just there hanging around, walking around and all that stuff. And Ian Finance, uh, but he also didn't go up. 
And there's one small, tiny restroom for everybody, for comics and civilians alike, you know. So I'm in the restroom and I see Sean Patton in there and it's a tiny restroom. I was like, oh, shit, we're two fat guys in this small restroom, all that stuff. Then I had this magic moment. And it's weird to say I had a magic moment in the men's room, but this, it, it, it is what it is. So um, I'm at the urinal and I'm a big guy, you know, of stature. Uh, so I'm sticking out a little bit and... This guy walks behind me, he has a little bandana over his mouth, you know, walks behind me and he's trying to get into the stall, but he's unable to open the stall door because uh, because I'm blocking it with my body, you know, and I hear, uh, oh, sorry, pal, uh, excuse me, pal, uh, sorry about that, pal, all that stuff, and I realize, I recognize that voice, I recognize it was Dave Attell, Dave Attell just call me pal while I'm peeing with my penis in my hand. I mean, I don't know how y'all do it, but that's how I do it. I was like, whoa, that's crazy. I was like, oh, sorry, excuse me. Sorry, my bad, sir. <laughs> you know, and so get back to my table, get another drink, blah, blah, blah. A couple of comics later, bringing up our last comic of the evening. Give it up for Dave Attell. I was like, whoa, shit. Blah. It was wild, dude. Couldn't take any pictures, of course, because they took away my phone. Or they didn't take it away, but they made me put it up in a little... Uh, they made me turn it off and then put it up in a little, like, envelope, a sealed envelope. And uh, so I didn't want to fuck around and, like, take my phone out and take pictures and stuff. Uh, I mean, I still did right when the show was over. I took a little quick picture of the stage and went outside and took a little quick picture of the, the Comedy Cellar sign. And just on the sign, just kind of out of the picture, just out of focus, just out of center, is uh, David Tell smoking a cigarette on the stoop right next to the Comedy Cellar sign. And I don't want to nerd out and fucking get a picture. So I just took it like I was taking pictures of the sign, being like a creep, like I do. Um, but that was so cool, man. So cool. I wanted to go to the cellar again, but just never had the opportunity to do it. Uh, so that was a Sunday after I got there. So the trip was starting off good. Uh, did, a, did a mic on Tuesday. I thought I was going to do two mics on Tuesday. Did one mic at the place called... Um, Old Man Hustle Comedy Bar. It was an outside comedy shed. Did it outside. And so I thought I was going to do that. That was in the Lower East Side. And then I thought I had to go, like, back towards uh, Times Square area where I was staying. And I'm supposed to do... I thought I was going to do a mic at the Producers Lounge. Because all the mics are, like, DM for to get on the list or just check in on the list or sign up, show up, pay $5, go up, all that stuff. So I thought, okay, let me go to the Lower East Side, let me hit this mic, and then let me go back to Times Square area to the Producers Comedy Theater, a Producers Theater Lounge, something like that, to do another mic. To find out that I was told the wrong day. They told me that I had a spot on Monday, but it was actually on Tuesday. So I could only do one mic on that uh, on Monday. But I felt bad, man, because I wanted to hang out and kind of like meet some comics, meet some of the, uh, the other open micers and stuff. But I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I got to go across town to go to this other mic. No big deal. You know, whatever. Just doing the open mic New York fucking thing, you know. And uh, so a night ended early. Just went to the bar, met up with the wife. And uh, yeah, ended, ended the night there. Tuesday, uh, I went to the producer theater uh, to do the mic that I thought I was going to do on Monday. But also on Tuesday, I got tickets to the uh, Big J Okerson show. He was doing a, like a storytelling show type of thing at the stand. And uh, about tickets, but it was like 30 minutes before, uh, like 30 minutes after this, uh, this mic started at the producer club theater or whatever. So I was like, do I do this mic? Do I do, I do that one? What about the show? What if I'm late for the show? I already bought tickets, but I'm here to do comedy. I got this spot. I don't want to fucking not show up to a spot. You know, you don't know who's going to be there. Maybe somebody could offer me a show. All this stuff's going in my mind. And uh, so I'm like, okay, I'm checking on the list. I'm watching the show a little bit. I'm at the producer theater uh, for the open mic. And I'm just like checking out people. And then I'm like, okay, where, where am I at? Oh, I'm coming up. Oh, shit. It's almost 930, almost show time. I'm not going to make it, you know, if I take the subway, I got to get a lift. I'm planning all this stuff out. So they uh, they tell me, okay, you're up next. And I was like, good, I'm up next. I ordered my lift right before my set started. 
and then I go up and I start doing it. I was having a good time, man. I was I was fucking in the zone. I was super hyped. I felt like I had something to prove, even, even though nobody knew who I was. I was like, I'm fucking doing this in New York City, having a blast, blah, blah, blah. Uh, get off stage. And I'm bummed out because my whole plan was to go do mics and then hang out and talk to people, meet people out there. But this is the second time where like I got to bounce right when I get off stage. Get off stage, say what's up to like the the host and all that stuff, and like oh see you around, oh good set, oh thank you, oh cool, whatever. And then my Uber has already been waiting for like two minutes. I was like oh man, that guy got here fast. Uh, get to my Uber, get to the stand, see everybody hanging out outside. Big J Okershin, uh, Ari Shafir, Giannis Papas, all the people. So I'm just like oh, okay, don't want to. Don't want to be a creep. Let me just go inside, go to my seat, blah, 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 all that stuff. Get there right before the show starts. So I was like, oh, man, it's fucking good timing. This is like so New York, you know, just going across town. Um, let me do a mic. Okay, let me go to a show, doing all that stuff. Uh, it was a good show, storytelling show. Again, like they had Giannis Papas, Roy, War- War- Roy Wood Jr., um, a couple of other comics. I can't remember. Jeez. And... Uh, so yeah, so that was cool. Uh, Wednesday did a couple other mics. Uh, Thursday did two mics at the same spot, and then Friday did uh, Seller Seventy Seven, and then went to Brooklyn and did um, the Tiny Cupboard open mic. And it was just cool, man. It was just cool, like, nav- navigating, like, the subway system and figuring it out and being so proud of myself. I'm so bad at maps. Uh, so I'm just like, you got to get there. I've never – I didn't get lost once. So I'm pretty proud of myself for not doing that and, you know, uh, not getting lost for sure. Uh, but it was just a rush, dude. I fucking hate driving. I hate driving. So the fact that the subway system is so fucking easy. I mean, I did a lot of walking, did a lot of sweating. Uh, Apparently, it was a heat wave when I was out there. So I was like, wet t-shirt contest every day, all the time. Didn't matter. I mean, as soon as I step out of the, the, uh, the hotel, sweating. Couldn't stop sweating. It was disgusting. Uh, but that's, that's who I is, you know? Um, did good. I, there's plenty more to go in, into my New York trip, but I just want to like, this is so I, I, I'll maybe get, get into it later. Good trip. Me and the wife had a good time. I did my comedy thing when I could. We did the tourist things when we could. It was fucking. It was a great week. Great week. So stoked. So stoked on life that I haven't been in a long time. Um, feeling good. Flew back in on Saturday. Flew back in Saturday morning. um, Did a show opening up for uh, JT Haberstadt and uh, Eddie Pepitone. Felt so good about that set. Did a solid 10 minutes. Well, okay. I did fuck up one joke, which still fucking bugs me till this fucking day. But other than that, I had a good set. Felt pretty strong about it. Felt pretty good about it. Put out a couple of clips. You can see that on my Instagram. Or I put a five-minute edited clip of that set uh, on the YouTubes. Support the YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube. Let's get the Baba Cole Accord YouTube page to 100. At least a little bit over 100. Let's let's blow that bitch up. Come on. I don't ask for much. I hardly ever ask for subscribers except every episode that I do. So, if you could... Like and subscribe on the YouTube, uh, on the Spotify, on the iTunes, on wherever you're listening to podcasts. Please like and subscribe. I'm going to I'm gonna be that guy. I'm going to start to be that guy to where I try to get the numbers up. It's a numbers game. I always try to be, I'm not a numbers guy. I don't care about listens. I don't care about subscribers. That's, that's, that dude's dead. That dude is gone. This guy right here that you're listening to right now, he gives a fuck about numbers let's get it up let's get the subscriptions subscribers the listens the plays the downloads let's get those bitches up please so um little backstory 
we were in the process, the wife and I were in the process of moving apartments. We already put in our notice at our current apartment here. Uh, and then we found apartment, an apartment close by in the downtown area that we were happy with. And they had a sweet deal. If we did a 15 month lease, they'll give us a first month free. And so for a while, we had two spots at the same time. So we're like, it sucks that we're, we, we signed the lease, but we're, then we're going to go to New York for a week. So we can't do any moving. But we have the whole month of June to slowly move stuff carload by, carload by carload and not stress it. Not stress it at all. And uh, so we we're pretty stoked about that. Go to New York. I fly back on Saturday. My wife is still in New York. She didn't even get back till Monday. So I'm just chilling. Had a good Saturday. Had a good Saturday night with the Eddie Pepitone show. Sunday, I think I just fucking chilled. I didn't do anything. Uh, and then Monday, the wife got home. You know, uh, we started packing stuff little by little. Uh, all that, all that good stuff. Whatever. Uh, sorry. And uh, so Tuesday night. Tuesday night, we're like, okay, let's start taking some boxes over to the new spot. It's time we start moving some stuff to the new spot. Take our time moving in. It's going to be good. Let's go. Load up the car. And then we go to the new apartment. And something in me tell, says, well, let's go take a walk. Let's go. Let's Before we take anything out of the car, let's go take a walk. Let's go open it up. And then we'll start moving boxes in, you know. We'll start moving our boxes in, go pick up another load, come back, do this for a couple hours. Everything's good. Get stuff done. We walk to our new apartment door, and we hear fans. I don't know how that comes out on the mic, but we hear fans. And we're like, what the hell? What's going on in here? Uh, so we'll unlock the door, open the door. It gets louder. There's a, dehum the, a, a dehumidifier. And like two other fans going wild in the apartment. The ceiling is coming down because apparently there was some water damage from the upstairs apartment that caused ceiling damage. Pieces of fucking drywall is on the floor. There's dust everywhere. The floor is warped. We're freaking out. What the fuck? How come nobody called us? How come nobody notified us? What the fuck are we going to do? Apologize for all the cussing, but we were just like, what the fuck? So, and it's Tuesday night. The office was already closed. We're just like, how come they didn't notify us? They obviously knew something's going on because there's all these fans in here trying to dry out the water damage. Wednesday morning, we wake up. I try to like, what is it called? I try to legal zoom. <laughs> I'm going through our lease. I'm looking at all the loopholes. How can the fuck can we get out of here? Find a loophole because the apartment is in in a hip in in ugh. Tiana. Nope. Inadhibitable. Inhibitable. We can't fucking live there, guys. We can't fucking live there. Okay? So um so we go up, I'm looking at legal zoom. How am I gonna write write a, a letter to get out of the lease? Fill in this. We're doing Mad Libs on the legal Zoom. It's fucking wild. So get to the end, and they're like, okay, here, pay us 50 bucks, and we'll print this out for you. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? Fuck that. So I just fucking bullshit put one together. Bada bing. This is, this is who our name is. This is when we're getting out. This is what you owe us. This is why we, we're not living there. Blah, blah, blah. Print it out, sign in, pay, sign in and dated it, whatever. And then their office opens at 8.30. I'm supposed to be at work at nine. So we go to the office right when they're opening it up. And I told my wife, okay, what are we going to do? We're playing good cop, bad cop. What are we doing? She's like, just don't be mean. Just don't, just be, let's just be cool. And I'm like, fine, fine. So we get there. Oh, good morning. How you doing? Good to see you. Blah, blah, blah. And my wife, nice as could be. Um, we just, we came into the apartment and we saw some damage and I just cut it off. I was like, fuck that. We want out of our fucking lease. We want our, our release now. There's water damage. Nobody notified us. We can't move our shit in there. We want to tear up our lease. We want out of our lease. Here's this, this uh, letter, letter that's saying that we're 
you know, evacuating. We want our lease tore up. Nothing. Give us our deposits back. All that good stuff. Oh, I I was out all week. I didn't see it. I didn't hear anything about it. I was like, well, somebody fucking knew because there's fans in there. So the maintenance knew. So somebody here should have known and they should have notified us. We're not moving in there. We can't move in. The floors are all fucked up. The ceiling's all fucked up. We need out of our lease. Let us out of the, uh, out of the fucking lease. And he's like, oh, well, let me let me see what I could do. Let me talk to my my manager. My manager's here today, so if we have any problems, he'll talk to you. Blah 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 blah. So it goes in the back and in the back for like a minute, whatever. It comes back. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get you out, out of your lease. No more lease. All right. Where's the deposit money? Oh, well, our finance guys that doesn't come in. Blah blah blah. It could take two weeks. Blah blah blah. blah. Like, All right. So we're out of our lease. You, you're gonna pay us our, our deposit back. We're fucking done. Do we need anything in writing? He's like, no, we don't. We don't really have anything in writing. And I was just like, all right. So what happens if you quit your job? Are we still gonna be responsible? And I'm like making sure that everybody hears me. You're telling us that our lease is is null and void, or our lease is terminated here, right? And everybody's just looking at me, and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we're we're gonna tear up the lease. The lease, there is no lease. That apartment, we can't put give put anybody in that apartment anyway because there's so much damage. Blah blah blah. Right, lease. I was like, all right, that's what's up. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Got out of the lease, and now we're just like, okay, we don't have a place to go to now. Our lease here is up, and we have two weeks, three weeks to figure out what we're gonna do. Come back. And we talked to our current leasing office. Hey, is there any way that we could take back our uh, letter, our intent to evacuate or whatever the thing is? Can we possibly renew our lease here? Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody already, uh, you know, somebody's already appointed to that apartment. They're set to move in, blah, blah, blah. But we can ask her or them, he, she, they, uh, if they're willing to take a different apartment. If they're willing to take a different apartment, you can stay there where we're new your lease, all that stuff. But it's up to the new person. It's up to whoever's taking over. Cool. Cool. Just can let us know. Just yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll give them a call. We'll call them and we'll see what's up. Cool. This was Wednesday. Wednesday morning. Uh go about my day. Um Five five o'clock before they before they close, they go downstairs. Hey, any any word about what's going on? Oh, we made calls, but she never called us back. Uh, we'll call again. We'll send an email. Blah blah blah. Okay. Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon. Hey, any word yet? No, nope, no word yet. We we haven't. We called. You know, we did it. We we called. We sent an email. No word yet. Fuck. Are they going to tell us no? What are we going to do? We're still in the process of looking for a different place. We don't know where we're going to live next month. Flipping out. Freaking out. What are we going to do? I was stressed out all week. All week because I didn't know what we're going to do. Didn't even didn't go out. Didn't do any mics. I was fucking low. I can't even I can't even explain how low I was feeling. You know? I didn't know if it was like, does anybody else get like ultra super depressed when their apartment lease is, is uh, coming to an end? I don't know. Is that just me? Fuck. Um, but I'm, I'm playing cool. I understand we we did say that we were going to move out. We did plan to have every intention of moving out, but now our situation is fucked and we need a place to stay. You know? No word on Thursday. Friday, hey, are we are we gonna be able to stay? Are we gonna be able to re- renew our lease? Okay, if we can't stay in our place, can we move to a different apartment? Oh, we can't do that. You know, the application there's a wait list. The application fee takes about three weeks, three months, blah 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 blah. So we really can't we can't do that. You know, uh, but we'll make another call. We'll, we'll see if that that the other tenant. Or the future tenant will uh, take another apartment, blah blah blah. And I wanted to tell them, like, look, I'll pay, I'll pay them five hundred bucks off their first month's rent. You know, if they're if they're willing to take a different apartment, they wouldn't fl- they wouldn't fuck with that. You know, like, oh, we can't really offer that stuff. That's legal and and liability, blah blah blah. Whatever. 
they were closed Saturday for Juneteenth. They were closed Sunday for um, Father's Day. So no word, no word, nothing. We went to go look at a different, a few apartments over the weekend. They were, they just weren't going to work out for us. They weren't going to work out for us. Um, finally found a different apartment that is right across the street from where we are, but is a lot nicer, a lot bigger, and a lot more money. But we're just like, well, I mean, we're kind of out of options, right? So I asked again on Monday. Monday, they're like, still haven't heard anything, but we'll give her 24 hours. I was like, well, how come you didn't give her 24 hours last week? How come she, she gets a new 24 hours this week? This has been since since Wednesday morning. Have we been fucking on the edge of her seat trying to find out what's going on? So we're like, fuck it. We get in the mindset. They're, they're going to fucking kick us out. They're not going to do anything to help us out. They're very cold here, very not helpful, whatever. They hate their jobs. I get it. So we go across the street. We uh, check out the, the apartments. Dig the place. It's a nice place. It's so fucking sweet. But then again, it is a lot more money than what we're paying now. It is a lot nicer. It is a lot bigger. It is a lot cleaner, whatever. A lot of good stuff. A lot many positives out of the new place. But we got to move. We got to move there. We got to move all the big stuff. Really not looking forward to that. Don't know what we're going to do. Blah, blah, blah. Finally get approved for that place across the street. Welcome. Welcome to your new home. Here's uh, the contracts and all that good stuff. We're like, cool. We got a place. Weight's lifted off our shoulders. At least we know we're not going to be homeless. We're not going to be, you know, whatever. Well, we got this. We got this figured out. Right after they sent, right after the, the apartment across the street sent the welcome to your new home contract, sign this, we get another email from our current place. Here is your lease renewal contract. So now I'm just like, damn, dude. I mean, it's a good problem to have out of a, 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 a you know, rather than the problem that we had before. Before we had no place to go. And now we have two places to possibly go. Should we stay or should we go? If we stay, no moving, no moving trucks, no packing any stuff else, none of this stress, none of this backaches, none of this extra money, blah, 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 blah. We'll stay here. But I don't know if the wife wants to stay here. I kind of don't want to stay here. The only reason why I want to stay here is because, like, I'm used to this. I'm comfortable here. It's just familiar places. We've been here for five years, you know? I don't know. That's still something up in the air. But it's a good problem to have. We could either stay or we could go across the street to a nicer place. And we'll just have, like, a weekend of fucking, like, hard labor moving the stuff. Like, we, it's not like we could rent a U-Haul just to go across the street. That doesn't make any sense. But now we got to get a dolly and we got to fucking roll our washer and dryers down the street or fucking bed or fucking couch. We got to cross the street with it. We got we to play Frogger with that shit. You know? I don't know. It's a good problem to have. But this, this week is doing a whole lot better than I was doing last week. Finally was able to go out, go out to the mic, went into LOL, bombed, didn't do good. Note to self, don't drink Red Bull before you go up to state, before you go on stage, because when the adrenaline kicks in, you're just going to be mumbling and stumbling and rumbling and blah, blah, blah. And then you got to deal with fucking hecklers and fucking shut the fuck up. You're all, you you don't like this joke. Oh, this joke bomb. Oh, <laughs> fuck you. But it was good to get back out there. I missed everybody. I really, I mean, I didn't want to take a week off. I really wanted to come back and fucking hit mics and do the tiger and all that stuff. But I just, I just was not in a good mindset last week. I'm doing better this week. That's why I sat down and started recording the pod, the Pat Out of Hell podcast to get this shit off my chest, to get out of my head about this shit because it was bugging the fuck out of me. It was really bugging the fuck out of me. But, Everything's getting good. Everything's coming. Everything's coming up, Patrick. You know, we're doing good. Uh, we're not out of the woods yet, but at least there's light at the end of the tunnel. And I know I can see it 
We're almost, we're on the home stretch. No pun intended, home stretch. Is that a pun? I don't know puns. That's it for this week. Maybe next week. Maybe I'll do a double since I i didn't do Pat Out of Hell's the past two weeks. I missed you guys. I missed doing this. I wish I could have gone more in detail about the New York trip. I was diarying. I was journaling. Diarying. What is it called when you diary? I was diarying. I was journaling about the trip. Uh, so I don't forget stuff. Some people gave me some shit about like, oh, yeah, you tag, you, you, why do you got to check in everywhere you go? Oh, you check in to do a mic. Oh, you check in to eat some pizza. We get it. You do comedy. We get it. You eat. We get it. But uh, I did that for me, man. I forget stuff a lot. I just want to make sure that I remember what's going on, where, where I was. Because when I go back and Jesus, I, I was trying to convince my wife, let's just fucking move out here. Let's move out here. She'll have a job already. You know, for what we pay here, we could get a 200 square foot room. You know, you ever wanted a toilet in the kitchen? Convenience, man. You know, who needs a couch? The bed, get a, the bed's the couch. You want to have a seat? Sit on my bed, my couch bed. Who needs all that room? If we, if we have a small place, we'll be out all the time. We don't want to be home. Let's get out of our box. Uh, I don't know. I love the subway system. I hate driving. I hate driving. And Jesus, if I if I lived in New York, all that walking that I did, all that sweating that I did, I would fucking lose so much weight, dude. I'm at the heaviest I've been in my life. I think just barely under 300. I think I'm like at 275, 280. 280, Jesus. What are you doing to yourself, man? That's a whole other issue for a whole different podcast, for a whole different pad of the hell. Um, yeah. So I will be at the LOL this Sunday uh, with Zach Dixon, with uh, Trey Tudson, and with Irma Lindo Reese at the LOL. That's on the 27th at 7.30. Super stoked about that show. It's going to be a good time. Come out, man. I want to start seeing some people out there. Now when I start doing shows, I'm going to invite people because I'm going to I'm going to guarantee a good time. You know? Zach is funny, Trey is funny, Irma's funny. I'm trying my best. So, come out on Sunday. Have a good time. Let's fucking hang out. Let's handshake. I'm vaccinated. Let's get it done. You know what I mean? I mean, I, you don't have to be vaccinated to come to the show. But I got my, I'm covered. I, I, I'm okay. If you do what you want to do, you want to go out wilding and uh, carefree and living your life fucking Cole Beasley style and shit, I respect that. But uh, I'm vaccinated, so I'm out there. It's so wild. I'm getting used to it. People, I, like, no mask. Nobody's wearing masks. We got a sh we got boxes of masks here. We ordered boxes of masks because we thought this was going to be forever. And so I think we're just going to be mask people. That's I'm, I'm about that life. I got to use them anyway, you know? What, what else am I going to do with all these masks? Might as well wear them. Um, that's it for this week, everybody. Thank you for checking out the Pat Out of Hell podcast. I don't know where I'm going to be this time next week. Maybe it'll be right here, right now, where I am right now. Or maybe I'll be coming from you know, from across the street. We'll see. It's a good problem to have. Focus on the good problems to have. And uh, we'll be all right. All right. Uh, Twitter and Instagram, at your homie Pat. Uh, everything else you can find at babacoacore.com. Again, like and subscribe uh, to the YouTube page, to the Spotify, to the iTunes. That's how you support the podcast. I do this for free. I do this for the love of the game. And I really want to uh, start asking people to support. And I hate doing that. I hate begging people to support what I do. But I'll tell you this much. I fucking love and appreciate everybody that supports in any way you're amazing you make me feel good about myself and i can't thank you enough for that that's huge that's fucking huge 
So thank you very much. Uh, check out the Glass Clown Podcast. And uh, check you next week. Laters. Well, he not only rambled, but he rumbled and stumbled. <laughs>